Hey friends, in this one we're gonna be talking about the new PTZ camera from Canon, the CR-N300. Be seen, heard, and better understood through virtual gatherings. Elevate your message with corporate streams. This camera was just announced recently. It's now on pre-order and they'll be shipping it shortly. There are two colors. It's the satin black and the titanium white. And there are three models, the N300, the N500, and the X500. In this one, we're gonna be talking about just the N300. So we'll talk about all the specs and all the things that come with this camera, why it's something that you would wanna buy. If you wanna see these specs on the other cameras, you can look at those in the description below. I'll have videos to each one of those. And I'll also do a comparison between the N300 and the N500 of why you would choose one over the other. So let's get into the specs of this new camera. So you can capture on a micro SD card up to 4K 30 frames a second or 1080p up to 60 frames. It has an 8.29 CMOS sensor with hybrid autofocus. It has HDMI, 3G SDI, IP, and USB video outputs. It's got built-in NDI and HX support for power over ethernet. It has a 20 times optical zoom, 20 times digital zoom, and auto white balance. It has a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio input and an AC adapter is included. It's flexing the Canon Digic DV6 processor. It can be controlled over IP, RS-22, infrared, and Wi-Fi control. It also works with the Canon control software and is compatible with the Canon PTZ controller. Now, one of the things camera manufacturers kind of do that's a little bit tricky is sensor size. Instead of having a straight number or a measurement, they're using a ratio here. It's one and two thirds sensor. If you Google this, you'll find an image that compares this one and two thirds sensor size to a one inch sensor. It's around a quarter of the size of a one inch sensor. It's also worth noting that one inch sensor is roughly about a quarter of an APS-C sensor. And the larger the sensor, generally speaking, the better it is in low light. With larger sensors, you get that portrait look where your subject is more in focus and the background falls off and becomes out of focus. With smaller sensors, it's harder to create that look. And traditionally, smaller sensors have been used for broadcast television, ENG, or news reporting. Today, video sensors are getting larger and many mirrorless or DSLR cameras support full frame sensors, which are huge compared to a one inch sensor and gigantic compared to this one and two thirds inch sensor. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not gonna get the shallow depth of field. Your image is not gonna look like a DSLR because of those sensors. That's the main thing here. And without stealing all the thunder from my versus video between the N300 and the N500, one of the main takeaways is that there's a one inch sensor in the N500 versus the one and two thirds sensor for the N300. We mentioned earlier that there's a 20X digital zoom alongside the 20X optical zoom. What that means is there's a lens in the camera that allows for the optical zoom to happen, right? A physical property is happening. And then once that's hit its limit, the digital zoom takes over. I would recommend if you're able to stick with just the optical zoom, most of the time digital zooms don't hold up well. The only real exception is in the Sony lineup and I actually use their clear image zoom on my FS5s. We'll see when this product comes out and it's in the hands of professionals, maybe it will hold up to the FS5's capabilities of that digital zoom, or maybe it'll fall off like a lot of the other prosumer digital zooms. It has gain listed from zero to be up to 36 dB. So even though ISO and gain are not exactly the same thing, they're similar. So let's go ahead and look at this chart and we'll see as we go up in decibels, it adds gain. And so if we look at 30 decibels, that's about 25,000 ISO. And then 38 dB again is equivalent to around 51,000 ISO. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how much gain could be added to your shot. On the image sensor, there is a listing here for a minimum illumination, which is 1.5 lux. So it's saying the minimum amount of light is about 1.5 lux that's needed to produce an image. Hopefully you're not trying to use this camera in the dark. So having that minimum rating will be something you might need to adhere to. And if you wanna learn about lux, let us know in the comments. We'll do another video in the future all about it. There's a white balance range listed between 2000 and 15,000, even though you'll probably be between 3200 and 5600. There's a shutter speed listed between a sixth of a frame and one two thousandth of a frame. Same thing there, you'll probably be about a sixtieth of a frame, depending on what you're shooting. And the max digital zoom is listed as 20 times, like we mentioned before. The lens can do 20 times zoom as well. And the focal equivalent is between 3.7 to 73.4 millimeters. This is the 35 millimeter equivalent of 29.3 
to 601. That's a pretty impressive range. That's another thing that's worth noting. If you have a smaller sensor, your zoom ratio from the widest to the tightest will be greater because you have a smaller sensor to project the light onto. So that would be one of the advantages of the N300 versus the N500 is you have extra range. The max aperture is 1.8 to 2.8. So this is gonna depend on your zoom. The further you zoom in, the harder it is for certain lenses to produce light throughout that lens. So that's why you'll see a range on certain lenses lenses. So long story short, if you're on the widest part, you might be able to get away with a 1.8, but most of the time 2.8 will be the maximum aperture of the lens that's built into this camera. The minimum focal distance when you're all the way wide is 0.4 inches or just one centimeter. So that's pretty close. That's pretty awesome. And then if you're zoomed in all the way in the telephoto side, it's going to be about 23.6 inches or 60 centimeters. There is optical stabilization, autofocus, and the ability to control focus manually through one of the apps mentioned before. It can do NTSC and PAL, which are the US standards and the European standards for video. So instead of reading all these resolutions to you, I'm just gonna let you look at these and see if any of these float your boat. It is kind of funny that there are resolutions as low as standard def. So if you're still doing standard definition, it's probably time to upgrade your system. Now streaming is a little bit of an exception there because for business streaming, it's not about the highest resolution, it's about getting the message across. And so sometimes on corporate networks, you have to reduce the resolution and the bandwidth to make that work. So just keep that in mind. Even though I am poking fun of it, I understand why that's the case. There are some interlaced options. So if you have an old school broadcasting setup, this could also integrate well into your current setup. And then for SDI output, it is a 3G output, meaning it can go up to 1080p. The RJ45 connector can provide an output as well. And this camera has the ability to stream over several different protocols. So depending on your current setup and what software you're using for streaming, this camera is trying to be flexible and accommodate multiple formats and multiple codecs. H.264 is the primary codec that it uses for streaming, and this can be transmitted over RTMP, RTP, or RTSP at 1080p, 720p, or 360p. The frame rates for this are 2997, 5994, and 60p. It's interesting that this camera only lists H.264 and doesn't list HVAC, AV1, or any of the other newer codecs for live streaming. H.264 is still the standard and is still the most popular format, even in 2021, but having these other codecs that produce lower bit rates and have higher quality would have been a nice bonus as well. This device can multicast over RTMP, RTP, and RTSP at 1080p, 720p, or 360p at 2997 or 5994. For controlling the camera for the pan, tilt, and zoom, you can use the 100 via IP or VSCA controls, and the movement speed can be as slow as two degrees per second or all the way up to 300 degrees per second. The tilt can be as slow as 0.2 degrees per second or 170 degrees per second. So this has a pretty wide range of speed for this camera. It does have a built-in tally light and this camera has supported protocols like Canon XC, IR, RS22, and Visca. So the interfaces or the ports on the back of the device are one BNC or 3G SDI, one HDMI type A female. It doesn't specify which version of HDMI it is, by the way. One RJ45 HX or NDI female jack, one USB 3.0, type C or USB video female, one eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter stereo mic level input, a separate RJ45 or RS22 or Visca input, and then finally a USB type A for input as well. This unit can be powered over ethernet and 802.3 AT specifies the amount of power that's being drawn by this device. So make sure that that is supported by your network switch that's providing the power. It also has a AC power connection, which is a single barrel coaxial over 24 volt VDC. When it's plugged in power over ethernet, it draws 16.2 watts of power. And when it's plugged into the wall, it's using a 24 volt power supply using 15 watts. Its operating temperature is between 32 to 104 degrees or zero degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. And its storage temperature is between 32 degrees and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Its operating and storage temperatures are the same, which are 32 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees to 40 degrees Celsius. That's worth noting. It's telling us that you cannot use this in, in freezing temperatures or temperatures below 32 degrees. So keep that in mind. This might disqualify your purchase depending on where you live and what use this camera has. Its operating and storage humidity are between 10 and 90% as well. The product dimension is 7.01 by 6.46 by 6.06 inches or 17.81 
by 16.41 by 15.39 centimeters, excluding protrusions. And the camera weighs 4.9 pounds or 2.2 kilograms. So I hope this video helps you make a better decision on this camera and whether it's gonna fit into your workflow. If you wanna see this camera compared to its big brother, check out this video here. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.